What's going on guys, Twiggin Timber Outdoors here. I'm gonna show you today the new box from True Fly Supply. It's a little different than what you're accustomed to, but I think it's something that should intrigue you and get you excited about being an angler in the fly fishing industry, as well as somebody who wants to be a little more creative. Like I said, I'm not gonna throw you guys for a loop here. The new True Fly Supply Box is in fact something a little different than some other companies are doing. Inside the box, instead of a bunch of flies, they provide you with instructions and all the materials needed to tie the fly of the month. So today, I'm gonna go through and show you guys the fire bead wire worm that they're providing for you guys as well as you know some of the easy tips and tricks that I like to use to tie the fly just a little bit better. So here we go as you can see I've got the uh, number eight scud barbless hook that comes in the true fly supply pack on the vise along with the provided orange fire tungsten beads and the instructions are going to tell you to keep the uh, bead off for now, but this is just a different way that I can show you that for me is pretty time efficient. I've cut off the um, chenille at about three or so, uh, three and a half inches probably, and um, I've spooled up on my provided um, bobbin, a three-aught red nylon, and it's actually pretty good stuff. As you can see, my chenille, I'm going to measure my chenille halfway down the shank of the hook right by the middle of my finger. Okay, I'm going to slide my hook back. And I take my nylon thread and I'm going to start. And I'm sorry that because of my hand going in front of the light, it's going to look like I'm losing light. I'm going to just start at an angle, make a couple wraps, and then go forward or down the shank of the hook, covering the thread that I was in my left hand, or reverse that if you're a left-handed tire. Add a couple more wraps there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that measurement that I made before. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to snip towards the front of the fly, maybe about half a millimeter to a millimeter behind the eye of the fly. I have the hook rather. I'm going to take this. This is going to be the front part of my fly. From where I had it before, or where, where, the, where the, the thread sits now, I'm going to put the chenille where I cut it, right where the fly, uh, or where the, where the thread is, and I'm going to make a few loose wraps, and I'm going to cinch down on the chenille binding it as best I can to the top of the hook. And the lower and tighter I can keep my chenille to the hook, typically, the farther my bead will go up. Okay. In addition, one another optional step that is not mandatory whatsoever, is anytime you're going to separate your thread, which you will in a minute, I like to throw a little bit of Sally Hansen, which is just nail hardener, on some of those threads. It dries in a few matter of moments. You can also use UV resin as well, but it's not really mandatory. Add some little air here so it dries. Again, that is not mandatory, just an additional little step. Then I'm going to try my best to put this hook, or this, this bead, this tungsten bead, as far forward on this fly as my wraps allow. Farther 
Either forward I can get it. There we go. Not ideal. I'd like ideally to have the chenille butt right up to it, but honestly not a big deal. It's tough whenever we have um, tight uh, tungsten beads, smaller tungsten beads, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is you can either use a whip finish tool or you can do a few half hitches. And to do a half hitch, kind of what I do, is I take my fingers, make, the, make a number two, put it bottom palms down on the line, then I'll take my bobbin, go towards the fly, Give a slight little twist like this, and it makes a little cross. And then it's almost like making a little knot on the fly. Pin it down, pull it tight. That's the way I do my half hitches, um, but uh, there are other ways as well. That's the way I found the easiest. Okay. So again, I'm going to add a little bit after I snip my thread free. I enjoy doing this for the first time with you guys too. I'm going to take my optional UV resin and just add a little a little dab to the threads. Again, not needed. Then, I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to start behind, and do the same process just like we did the first thing when we first got our hook, our bear hook there. I'm going to create a base. Okay. And we're going to work back probably until, I don't know, the start of the bend. Because we want our worm to be fairly, I don't know, normal, I suppose. Then we're going to take our provided, where'd it go? Our provided brassy wire. And this is in an orange color. I'm going to... Take about, let's see, I like to just start with the whole spool in my hand. I also know people who take bobbins and then thread these through the bobbins. That works just as well. It actually provides you with pretty good control of the wire as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire I'm going to put a little bit of a tail into the thread base we just created. And I'm going to do a few wraps. And I'm going to work my thread up and over it a little bit. That's going to anchor it down. And then from there, I'm going to work my thread back up to just behind the bead itself. Here's where you can add another few half hitches. I think of a half hitch sometimes as like a progress save. Because if you ever have the thread come off the fly, you know exactly what I mean. So from there, I'm going to take the remainder of the chenille that I cut off before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bury the head of it behind the bead. And this is where sometimes a little bit of a, an open flame here can help. And I probably should have done that in the beginning. As you barely touch the flame near the chenille and it points a little bit better. So once I've done that, I can kind of roll up my fingers, and it creates a little point, and that can sometimes 
help me situate. There we go. I'm just going to create a little bit of a bind. Anchor. Okay. And again, you could throw a half hitch in here. You know, no big deal. What I like to do is then lay the chenille down along the body of the fly. Take my wire. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Because I'm wrapping overhand on my, so around this way, on my fly with my, with my um, thread, I sometimes like to, depending on the tie, there are rules of thumb where you can go along with it, and it helps bury the tag end, or against it, which helps anchor it. Because we're not going with any material on the body itself, it really doesn't matter in this case. So we're just going to go with it. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to work my wire along the body of the fly. I don't know. It really doesn't matter how, what the intervals are. But I went about every millimeter or so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread, anchor down my, th I like to anchor twice, go behind twice, go on top twice, behind twice, throw in either a whip finish or a few half hitches. We need a whip finish here. It's a three turn whip finish. Okay, not necessary. Leaving my thread still without snipping it, I will take my brassy wire here and I'm going to make a 90 degree angle and I'm going to spin it. This helps break it down and eventually it'll pop right off. Then throw another half hitch or so. You can throw another whip finish in. Cover up that broken tag and snip your thread and for me I always like to end with a little bit of Sally it just mean it just elongates the life of the fly sometimes it soaks right into the material so the last thing I like to do take my flame and just kind of Warm the edges a little bit. It creates a nice little um, taper to your fly. Beautiful. And there you have it. It's not the prettiest, but I like enjoy doing this with the first one out of the kit with you guys. Uh, it's a, in a very effective fly. You can do this with squirmy material as well. Chenille's the classic. The hothead bead really does add an attractiveness for certain fish, especially fall spawning fish or winter fish, uh, tying this in a multitude of different um, color combinations. But if you're interested, I have another similar tie as well as other ties on my channel, just like this one. So links will be in the description. In addition to the fly material, you also get some really cool stickers, some sweet treats, and course a tapered leader so if you like this video if you enjoy the content I'm gonna try and do this like once a month give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel check out the other videos in the playlists and until next time guys catch you guys on the flip side tight lines and we're out